Good morning, everybody. I'm Stacy with Stacy's Organizing and Decorating for Life. I'm here to help you organize your thoughts and decorate your perspectives. Today, we're going to talk about, we've been talking about revamping. We've been talking about relationships. Today, we're getting down to the crux of everything because the crux of everything is that relationship that we have with the inner child. You know, when we get grown, we think we're just over this stuff. We think we're grown up and we know how to handle everything. However, all of the relationships that we've talked about in the prior videos, that relationship with our children, that relationship with our parents, that relationship with our loved lovers, loved ones, friends, all of those are a development from this inner child who we feel comfortable with based on the rhythms and you know regulations or dysregulations, the fragmentations of those inner child relationships that we developed. Our preference stem from all of those. So if you like that that's the topic of our video today, please hit the like and subscribe button below. And don't forget to look at the disclaimer below because I'm not a doctor or any of those things. I'm a life midwife. I help people navigate through the birth canals of life, the different chapters and challenges that we may face. So let's get into the topic. And talking about this, you know, I myself, still in my age, deal with these inner child issues. I think that that's part of our navigation through this life is that's why we chose the parents that we chose if we did indeed chose them and if we want to be empowered being empowered means that we have choices and we choose to make the ch choose to make the choices that are better for ourselves and better for others that unifies. That's what these videos are all about is to make choices that unify us instead of divide us because we have the choice of being unified or divided. I know for myself when I'm having my brattles, and I've, I've you know, decided to call this brattles, if I'm an adult child, if I'm being an adult child, if my inner child stuff is coming up. And so oftentimes we fail to recognize the inner child as the relationships that we have on the outside of ourselves. That all of that comes from that. You know, we talked about transgenerational trauma in the last video or intergenerational trauma I asked a psychologist this week you know what's the difference he said it's the same so as far as I know it's the same but anyway trauma childhood trauma you know and it, we talked about that last week and how we tend to separate ourselves from people you know how we tend to um, alienate ourselves from people how we tend to be estranged and it comes from that trauma underneath, right? I mean, and we can all claim that. But the problem is, is that we don't all claim the healing that can go along with that. And if we don't claim the healing that can go along with that, then it can stem into our future relationships because we keep seeing things from the back of our mind, that mind's eye, instead of seeing things from the light, from within. You know, so... I balance chakras and the light comes from, you know, above. And, and there's all kinds of things. But anyway... If you're not into that, you can still heal, is what I'm saying. And that healness brings the realness of this life. You know, that we all have shadows in our lives. That a picture wouldn't look right if we didn't have shadows. And so we, we continually heal. And like I said, some of the things that I heal on, I heal again on the same things at a different level. And so, like I say, I pick my brattles. When we're raising our own kids... We're picking our battles about what are we going to fight with our kids about or not. Are we just going to close the bedroom door when it's crazy in there? Are we going to bitch and complain and, and have these, you know, do whatever? And whatever is suitable for you. I'm not saying either way is wrong. Whatever way is suitable for you. But we pick our battles. Well, when we get grown and we're having our own inner child experience... We pick our brattles because the thing is, is when we're having a brattle, we feel shitty. I know when I have a brattle, I'm feeling shitty. There's some things that happen that I may get triggered from, that you may get triggered from. And when these things happen, sometimes they're hard to shake off. No matter, you know, how, how a person tries to amend it, you know, amend the twistedness or, or whatever happens, you know, whatever causes us to twist off and, and to have that trigger. And sometimes, you know, I know that I've had it, that I've been triggered by something and then somebody will change their mood. Maybe they were in a bad mood when they first dealt with me. And then, you know, but I have this brattle, this inner child that has these attachment issues, these abandonment issues. These We have so many issues with these inner child issues. There's an ACE test that you can take, and perhaps in a moment I will read what the questions to that is. There's like 10 questions and, uh, in this ACE test. 
whoop, getting close up. And I don't have my makeup on today because we're getting naked. Because this is the bottom. This is the nakedness of it all. So I purposely did not put on makeup to do this video today. Because in dealing with that inner child, we have to know that we're just perfect and right as we are. But our inner child doesn't feel that way. I just had a bridal here recently. You know, and I'm so grateful for being able to have that one person. Or sometimes we have a few more people. But, you know, when we believe in a higher consciousness and we don't, you know, st want to stay stuck in our head because these brattles hurt. Like I said, they make us feel shitty. They cause us pain when we're feeling inner child feelings. If you wonder, you know, if you're having a brattle, it's when you're feeling these inner child feelings. When you're disappointed in another person, that's when we're dealing with our inner child feelings. You know, it, oftentimes it's a trigger for those feelings. So I'm going to put my glasses on to read you about this ACE test to see if you had the adult trauma. It's Adverse Childhood Experience Survey is what the ACE is. So it says, Did a parent or other adult in the household often or very often swear at you, insult you, put you down, or humiliate you, or act in a way that made you afraid you might be physically hurt? Did a parent or other adult in the household often or very often push, grab, slap, or throw something at you, or ever hit you so hard that it had marks and you were injured? Did an adult or person at least five years or older than you ever touch, fondle, or, or fondle you, or have you touched their body in a sexual way, or attempt to actually have oral, anal, or vaginal intercourse with you? Did you often or very often feel that no one in your family loved you or thought you were important or special, or your family didn't look out for each other, feel close to each other, or support each other? Did you often or very often feel that you didn't have enough to eat, had to wear dirty clothes, or had no one to protect you, or your parents were too drunk or high to take care of you or take you to the doctor if you needed it? Were your parents ever separated or divorced? Was your mother or stepmother often or very often pushed, grabbed, slapped, or had something thrown at her, sometimes often or very often kicked, bitten, hit with a fist, or hit with something hard? or ever repeatedly hit over at least a few minutes or threatened with a gun or knife. Did you live with anyone who was a problem drinker or alcoholic or who used street drugs? Was a household member depressed or mentally ill or did a household member attempt suicide? Did a household member go to prison? Now add up your yes answers. This is your ACE score. So this is the ACE test that they talked about. And oftentimes in trauma, a lot of people don't maybe think that they experienced trauma if, you know, they weren't beaten physically or sexually molested or anything like that. But the real deal is, is that trauma occurs for each individual person and no one can say what trauma is for one person to the next person. This is why we need to be gentle with all persons and with that inner child. So in my brattle earlier this week, and again, you can find that ACE test on the internet, you know, and it, it's adult... I'm going to repeat what it is again so you, you know. It's the Adverse Childhood Experience Survey. That's the ACE test. So that, you know, some psychologists may use that test to see. So these are things that navigate your experiences in adulthood to help you heal. You may feel these things and they may not be real. Say if a person's just in a mood, oftentimes we personalize it to us, you know. But they're not really having a mood with us. They're in their own head about what's going on with them. But we personalize it to us. We may feel abandonment. Some people are processing their own things. We may feel the non-attachment. And a non-attachment is a good thing. You know, with all the experiences in our life, is that there could be a little good to it and a little bad. When we're experiencing stuff that's really good, there could be a little bad because we can become addicted to those things that are really good. So it's not to say good or bad. I'm just saying that these are things that if we don't label it, you know, and we don't, like, get obsessed with it, but we do, right, because we're humans. And then the bad things is that we think the bad things are going to last forever, but they're not. So when we can, you know, come to our higher power, whoever we perceive that to be, and maybe it's an individual, you know, and, and that's not really healthy, I will say that not to depend on one specific person to, to you know make you feel loved or to support you mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. That one person won't because I believe that higher power is in each and all of us, that we all have a soul, and one soul connecting to another is that unity. When we connect human and spirit, we connect spirituality, you know, but it's also humanity. So 
For me, when I had a brattle here recently, I connected with another person, and that person was able to stop me because I was so disappointed in myself at why, why I couldn't shake a trigger off. Because the other persons, you know, they, they were in their own thing. It, would, it had nothing to do with me. But yet, I took this on and was processing it, and I did all the things that I tell other people to do, suggest other people to do sometimes. You know, and even as a coach, even psychologists, even doctors, we need help too. It's not like we have everything figured out. So I talked to a person who I really trust, you know, and she said to me as I'm having this disappointment about my inner child having this brattle and not shaking this because this was an emotional wound from the past that I chose to take on in the present. You know, the person hadn't done all the fears that were underneath that wound. Those never happened. That was just my perception, you know. So a dear friend of mine said to me, I'm going to apologize to your inner child right now because I was so disappointed in the inner child for having a fit, a brattle. And she said, you know, that she told my inner child that, you know, they understood, she understood that that child was hurt and that child was having some feelings and that she apologized for me for being disappointed in that inner child and not being compassionate to the inner child. And she gave me a big hug and that went down into me and I cried. You know, and I'd been crying all day anyway, because like I said, when I feel that way, it doesn't feel good. When you feel that way, it doesn't feel good. When we have perceived somebody's wronged us that maybe have not wronged us. You know, when we get empowered and take responsibility for our feelings and don't blame other people. You know, that's, that's very empowering. You know, and it takes a lot of courage to do that. So if you're willing to do that, I applaud you because it's hard, but it's so worthy and you are so worth it to love yourself and have compassion for yourself and others so that I hope that you will embrace your inner child. We went a little over than I intended to go this week, so I wish you much love. You hug your inner child and find that trusting person who can recognize when you're having a brattle, you know, and uh, I hope that you all will have a fantastic week. Much love, much peace. And I look forward to connecting with you next week. Okay, bye.